Good day and welcome to SEO Bricks Insight, where we look at what's really going on in the world of the bricks. Now, today I want to talk about energy and the need for the bricks to have a coordinated energy strategy among the meat. The members, given a number of them, are major producers and other members are large consumers. Now, it seems that the Russian government also seems to think that a common energy strategy for the bricks is a good idea. As the Russian Minister of Energy announced, he says, he needs the BRICS members to share a unified energy strategy. Well, I'm getting something right. Now, the expert community has highlighted that this will facilitate not only the stabilisation of energy prices, but also the deepening of scientific and technical cooperation, including in the developing of clean energy. Plus, they believe it's essential to forecast the fuel and energy balances in order to attest, assess the potential for any energy deficits in participating countries. So what are the key points that may be included in the document and how will this affect the fuel and energy sectors of Russia and the other members? Plus, what are the prospects for the unification of energy strategy between the relevant BRICS countries? I mean, particularly between Russia, India and China, which already cooperate fully within the nuclear sector. And cooperation with Russia and China is already on board with the cross-border sales of electricity. Plus, India is one of the largest buyers of Russian coal. Now, the BRICS countries of China and India are the primary importers of Russian energy resources, particularly oil. And that represents the majority of its international trade in the fuel and energy resources. Now, to further coordinate the association and to stabilise the energy prices, it's necessary to expand the energy dialogue between the two countries, according to Antonia Levashenko, who's head of the Russian OECD Centre at the IPEI of the Presidential Academy. She says this can be achieved by approving a common energy strategy, which first and foremost is essential to implement measures to attract foreign investment among the member countries, as well as financial incentives to drive the development of the energy sector. Plus, BRICS countries may wish to explore the possibility of implementing initiatives to facilitate the exchange of industrial infrastructure and innovative technologies, as well as the ability to enhance scientific and technical cooperation. Now, they also may want to consider the potential for the development of further energy uh, prospects, including green uh, and clean technology, and what's going to happen with that. I mean, according to Antonia Levashenko, methods for reducing methane emissions from energy extraction could be employed, and that will c contribute to cleaner coal, gas and oil. She says it's also essential to align the actions of nations with maximising their potential of nuclear energy. Now, the IEA anticipates that following the peak of coal consumption in 2023-24, there'll be a modest increase in nuclear energy, particularly in Russia, China and India. That's because they're building more plants, of course. Now, before I continue, I'd like to make an appeal. If you like and enjoy my videos, you can help me fund the channel and my website, seobricksinsight.com, to further develop it. You can do this by making a small donation, which can be done by clicking on the thanks button at the bottom of the video screen. Now, everybody who does donate does get a personal thank you from me. Now, the Energy Institute has stated that the BRICS countries, particularly India and China, accounted for the majority of coal and oil consumption in 2023. Well, there's a surprise. I mean, this is despite China accounting for the majority of coal consumption. Forecasts from the SP Global and the IEA indicate that India is now going to be the major user of industrial coal and, the, and its energy generation markets through into the 2030s. What's well, good news for Russia, which exports a huge amount of coal there. I mean, it says Indian consumption is projected to grow by an average of 3% a year to 2.9 billion tonnes by 2050. Now, the long-term forecasts of the IEA and the Energy Institute indicate that in 23-24, the US have reached their ceiling in oil and coal consumption. Now, according to an expert who noted the forecast, the results of the sanctions and restrictions, Russia has now completely orientated its supplies to the BRICS countries of oil, gas and coal. 
Now, it's also pretty well known that the largest importers of Russian oil are China, India and a number of other countries, particularly South Africa and Brazil are growing. Well, there's a notable rise in consumption um, in South Africa, particularly given its economic expansion and its population growth and the lack of its own oil. I mean, one of the important uh, of Russia is it's an ally and it can provide reliable and cheap supplies to the South African Republic. I mean, one of the things of this fuel and energy balance is making sure that uh, the member and participating countries are, uh, are taken care of. Now, according to the Associate Professor uh, of Economics at the Presidential Academy, Tamara Safanova, balances can help promising areas of cooperation in the energy sector and determine the list of joint investment projects for the development of energy infrastructure and new environmentally friendly technologies. Now, the framework of BRICS Plus, the cooperation in the field of fuel and energy sectors will be taken in the form of investments, particularly in places like South Africa, India, China, Brazil. And that's mutual investments in extraction, processing, the development of production and transshipment capacities, as well as new, cleaner technologies for working with energy. I mean, the priorities are obviously the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and the construction of nuclear power plants, which Russia has underway in a number of countries around the world, like Bangladesh, like uh, Egypt. I mean, Russia is looking to expand with the potential new logistics chains of the nuclear power, particularly as it's the world leader in um, nuclear technology and in extraction and processing of nuclear um, fuel. Now, the majority of the mutual settlements in energy resources are now done in the national currencies of the member countries. I mean, one, uh, ruble, rupee are now routinely used, and that's going to continue. Now, the meeting of the BRICS energy ministers, the head of the Russian uh, energy department, Sergei Tan, he emphasised the significance of having a unified BRICS energy strategy. He said, the expansion of the association in 2024 led to a huge increase in the role of BRICS in the global oil market. Currently, the BRICS association countries have over 40% of global oil production and 40% of the consumption of petroleum products. That's mainly India and China, of course. He stated that according to forecasts by Russian analysts, by 2050, the BRICS countries will account for 50% of global energy production. Russian indicators that uh, also look at BRICS countries being well positioned in the extraction and export of critical materials that are essential for the development of renewable energy technology and the implementation of so-called climate transition strategies. Now, according to Ivan Emelkin, who's a research fellow at the Russian OECD Center, uh, he reckons that China accounts for 24% of global critical raw material supplies Russia has 10%, Brazil 6 Now, Russia was the world's largest supplier of palladium, second largest supplier of vanadium, platinum and rhondium, co cobalt, aluminium and germanium and gallium. Plus, all the BRICS countries possess substantial mining capabilities for materials that are essential to enhance uh, all forms of industry, particularly for the new green and clean energy. So BRICS countries are the primary suppliers of critical minerals to the global community, and that means the West. So they basically uh, are calling the shots. Now, given the largest markets are, are for mineral raw materials are within the BRICS countries, they're going to have to work on develop the field of mineral security and work together. I mean, a case in point is where is is OPEC, which has ensured the cooperation between member countries and coordinating the extraction and control of critical uh, oil, which has helped keep the price uh, a reasonable level and stopped the manipulation uh, of the uh, of the predator uh, banks. Obviously, the recycling and use of technologies uh, means that Russia earns a fair bit of money uh, from that particular side of things. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video and let's see if uh, Russia does 
uh, managed to bring off the uh, energy cooperation uh, that it's looking to do. If you like this video, please uh, subscribe and uh, do uh, make, use the comment section, which I hope you will all follow. And I'll see you all again soon. Thank you.